Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to another episode of Ferris Makes Hardware. This is episode 22 and we're continuing on this series where we're looking at Kaze, which is this Rust embedded HDL I've been working on. Um, like the last weeks, uh, this has been a, just a project that I've been kind of putzing at in the evenings in what little free time I have lately. Um, but I, it's definitely moving forward. And in particular, I made some good progress uh, in this last little while. Um, particularly, doesn't look like I did much in terms of <laughs> ticking off a lot of these boxes. Uh, but I finished instantiation and all the errors that come along with that, and I'm pretty happy about that. Um, <clears throat> so now there's a couple tests in this simulator module uh, that can test things like... Let's bump that up. Test things like if you make a recursive module definition, so if an instance tries to... If a module tries to instantiate itself, um, that's going to form an error. Uh, there's also like recursive definitions if two modules try to instantiate each other or something. Um, and this can happen like anywhere in the module hierarchy, so that works. Uh, also, I ended up adding some tests for um, combinational loops, uh, which with this API, you can only form those by hooking up um, a, a module's output to its input and then having it such that that feeds back, not through a register, uh, which is this will detect now instead of just over overflowing the stack. Um, and it'll give okay errors, probably not great, but good enough for now. Um, in addition to that, I made all registers and instances have names and I don't do any checking that the names are unique. That's something that I have to do for, um, and that's really helpful for, for reporting errors, uh, mostly. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, beyond that, I just did like a lot of little refactorings and just kind of fixing stuff up. And yeah, I'm pretty happy with the way this is going. I'm also doing some more um, uh, documentation. So if I do cargo docs, no depths open. I can show some of that. Um, yeah, another thing I did is I is I publicly exported everything in this uh, graph module. So now everything is just like available from the top level. Because I, I started going through the Rust API guidelines, just kind of ticking off the boxes. You can see there's a, a few more doc, uh, documented things here too. So module actually kind of describes a bit of what it does of what it is not entirely though but I think most of the methods on module now are also documented um, I was working on documenting registers which is almost done I still haven't done default value drive next so we'll probably start with that today um, just getting some bare bones docs uh, this is one of those things where like a lot of these concepts I don't really know who the target audience would be if someone pick picked up this library so it's like would they be a software engineer who wants to learn a bit of hardware? Or would it be someone who knows how to do hardware and is like, oh, finally, I can do hardware in Rust, which is which is what I am. But I don't think most people are that at all. So um, so I don't want to like dive too deep into those details. And I, I was talking about this with a guy at work. And he said, what you should do is document like your target audience should be you in a year. And I think that's a really wise way to put it, um, to just kind of document what I think is necessary. And don't really worry about anything else because, again, I don't think a lot of people are going to use this library anyway. I just kind of want to do this because I'm publishing it. Um, yeah, thanks for that, Dark Second. Appreciate it. Yeah, I'm putting forth at least effort to conform with the Rust API guidelines. And I think it's I think it's paying off. In addition, it's it's been a good exercise because as I as I like go through and document things, I notice things about the API that are a little bit inconsistent. So, for example, uh, instances. There's this instance function on module. I still need to document this, um, but. It has two string parameters. One of them is the name of the instance itself, and the other one is the name of the module that you're instantiating. And um, I wanted to make sure that the order of these parameters matches everywhere else in the API that also takes in like a name of the thing that you're instantiating. So like registers as well, I moved the name to the front. And that, that also fits with like inputs and outputs. And maybe I'll change this instance API actually to take a, take a module, and then you would have to get the module from the context if you didn't already have it in scope. Maybe that makes sense. Not entirely sure. But <clears throat> in fact, maybe that's a bit more type safe and then I don't have to take invalidate string arguments. I might do that. Although it really just moves the part in this method that goes and looks up the module name uh, out, out to a different function. So maybe this is more ergonomic. Who knows? I'll probably stick with this until I decide to change it later. <laughs> um, but yeah, so just kind of making it nice and uh, 
nice and consistent. It totally does. And I'm really enjoying that on this project as well. Um, and there isn't, there isn't that much more to document. I mean, I, I don't think I've documented, I guess I've documented most of the functions as I wrote them in, in signal here. So that's really nice. Um, but I didn't document the top level part of, of this signal struct because because I, I feel like this is the structure that's going to need the most explanation. I've kind of been deferring putting or putting that, putting off doing that. So um, that and then just a bunch of small things. So that's why I haven't ticked a lot of these boxes because there's little bits remaining. But I, I think we're actually really close. And I still haven't done any Verilog gen, uh, which is kind of funny. Um, and I need to document like these sim methods uh, or sim and or these generate methods, I mean. So in sim and in Verilog, I need to do that. Um, by the way, how do you guys in the chat? Zockwar, Dark Second, Chief Detector, Gary Kelly, Remage, how's it going? Um, so yeah, but I think I think I'll just continue on that. Uh, we'll probably document the rest of the register API because that's almost done, and and just continue filling that stuff in. Um, yeah. Because the, the most of the core stuff is there. I'm even thinking about taking hey Drew too. I'm even thinking about taking this um this sugar stuff. Uh I want to document this the if syntax that you get here. And I wasn't super happy with the implementation of this macro, but I might actually just stick with it and start porting some hardware and see how it goes. Uh but one of the things that's important as I'm documenting this stuff is that a lot of this stuff, like I need to add uh tests as I'm documenting it as well. I'm kinda doing both at once. Um, so that you document it and then whenever you document anything in rust you should also list like if that method panics and the conditions for that and i'm trying to be really rigorous and every time i add something here i can think of a, a way it would panic then i would add a test for it right away um, <clears throat> so it's pretty cool wrote a bunch of tests in rust with code coverage which is then published on git on GitLab pages oh that's really cool yeah yeah it really sounds really satisfying uh, oh, my favorite ADGQ run was probably the monkey ball run. That was pretty sick. Uh, the punch out one is also awesome. I really enjoyed that. And I also like the Ocarina of Time no source requirement and how like the whole second half of it had texture glitches. Yeah, I know what you mean, Dark Second. I really don't enjoy writing tests either. <clears throat> so I saw the Spider-Man run and I was just shocked because I, I just did, totally missed that that game even existed and it was gorgeous so uh, that was pretty funny but if you got any other ones you'd recommend definitely send them my way I'm just catching up on those two yeah Super Metroid Impossible is really cool also I enjoyed that Yeah, I'm also with this API. I'm, I'm really itching to to start porting uh, pieces of hardware in the Xenowing over to this. But again, the fact that stuff like registers uh, drive next method I think doesn't do like bit with checks and stuff. And I don't want to write any code until I can uh, like formalize those errors. So that's why we're just kind of sticking with that. But I think I think yeah, register I think is basically almost done. So we'll we'll. We'll dive into that. Um, so register has this register module itself, and there's a bunch of to-dos here. Again, I'll default value and drive next because I need to document and test those functions. Um, but then also in module, there's the function that actually creates registers, which is fun reg. And this also, like a lot of these to-dos, error if this name already exists, I don't really know entirely what that's going to mean because I think there are some like keywords in Verilog and Rust that you want to exclude. At the same time, you want to check this against uh, <clears throat> this module's inputs, outputs, and other registers. So I have a to-do there to kind of check this. And also, you want to make sure like the name is not empty, for example. And that kind of fits under that umbrella to me. I'm just not entirely sure how I want to handle that yet. So that's why these are just going to be to-dos. And they might be to-dos uh, in the first version of this library. I think that's fine. Yeah, I did see the Mario Maker race. That was really cool, too. I always love those. Where they do the, the the relay, I think that's really clever. 
or I think those are not really clever, but I think it's, I think it's a good format. Like I think it's uh, uh, really cool to watch, especially because because it's blind. I think that's the most fun part. <laughs> I always find bugs when you start writing tests seriously. I, I want to keep it at that. I think that's funnier. <laughs> Also very true. Um, so yeah, why don't we just start with this? So I think I added a little bit of docs for this this register uh, struct, and so I mentioned that it's, it behaves like, like a default flop, and more precisely this other one because I went I went looking on Wikipedia for like ways to describe a register, and they just had subsections with these with these things in them. So I just linked those. I think that that's fine for now. Um, then a bit about that behavior. And so then we'll just start with default value, actually, because that's probably the easier one to do. Um, and for this, again, we already we want to do these panics. Uh, this value range check, I'm also not sure about. But that's something I'd probably like to do. In fact, do I do I do range checks for lit? Because maybe I can just copy that. There should be an again module function lit. That's at least checking some stuff. Oh yeah, I actually do the checks here. Great, then we can just leverage a lot of that code. That's great. Um, awesome. Yeah, so we'll just start writing tests. So the way I've been doing these is like I split everything up into modules and that's mostly to just segregate all of these different things. And I just usually will copy this like some other test somewhere else. And then that's the that's how we start. So, uh, let's see. This is going to be, I think this is what we want. Do we want crate here, actually? Yeah, we do, I think. We may not need super. Nah, it doesn't really matter. But I think, what did I do on module, actually? Probably just copied this exact same thing. <laughs> I just do super in this case. Let's do that here too. Uh, so let's see. I also like to format these on one line until Rust format actually splits it up for me. I don't know what this error is going to be yet. And we're going to start with default value. Um, already specified error. We'll start with that. <clears throat> <laughs> uh, so for this, this is really easy. We make a module, and what have I been calling those in the other ones? I like to try and keep this stuff somewhat consistent. Like this is good, right here. So I also like to mark the line where it actually panics. So here we make a context, we make a module, and in this module we're going to make a register, um, m dot reg, and we give it a name, which I'm just going to call r. And then we give it a bit width. So, for example, 32 bits is fine. It really doesn't matter in this case. Um, let's actually do crate here then, because I think that's what we need for for context here. And then, then we need to set its default value. So we'll say r dot default value, and then we give it some value. So fade babe u32 is a good one. Um, and then here we should do that again, basically. Uh, and just to differentiate the two, I'm going to do dead beef u32. And then this error should be something like, uh, register r or attempted to specify a default value for register R and we can even do in module A, uh, but this register already has a default value, and then zero x fade babe. Or actually, let, we don't need to print the old one. We'll just do that. I think that's fine, and then. To detect this, this is this should be really easy. Now here, 
Actually, I do like to run the tests to make sure they don't pass yet. So we can just do cargo test. And my stream gets a little choppy when I do this, I think. No, that was fine. And then here, yeah, default value specified error. And it's not very readable when the thing that you want to panic doesn't panic because it doesn't tell you what the error is. Um, but at least it fails. So that's the important part. So we want to uh, look at this register data struct, which I think has this initial value here. Might rename that to default value, but that's fine. And so then we'll do so if self dot data dot initial value dot borrow dot um is some that's all we need then we can panic whoops i copied that oh yeah it selected text in in msys that's what that was okay so this will be register here which will be uh self.data.name and do we not have the module here maybe we don't I probably want to fix that. I mean, we don't need to report the name of the module, but I think it's helpful. So yeah, we'll do that. And then to get that, I think, what does reg do here? Right, so it makes this signal here and then the modules here. I'm gonna put module on, um, on this, in this data thing here. And that should solve that problem. So for register data, we can do pub module, which is going to be a module A like that. And then that should be this self.module.name or self.data actually. Okay, and then, yeah, we need to include that. The super module. Okay. And then fix all of that. So here, do module self. And then we won't have module here. Oh, signals always have this. Okay, then we'll just put it in both places and then nothing else should have to change. That's fine. I like that. An extra pointer, but that's okay. And then I think that's it. And now that passed. So I don't, I don't need to run the other tests. I don't care. They should work. Actually, it is possible that they fail. Unlikely, but possible, so. <clears throat> yeah, so much of my free time has been this kind of work. Which is boring, but. but I think this stuff will pay off, because every time I fix one of these, it's, it's a potential uh, mistake that I'm certainly going to make when I actually use this thing both for the Xenowing and for future hardware projects which I, I have a feeling that this is the API that I'll be using for a while um, or maybe I'm wrong and I've just spent all this time making a useless API in which case at least I had fun doing it so uh, next error is this value range check and again for lit we already had stuff for this so if we go to module lit has a bunch of this so lit cannot fit into bit with error one and error two i'm just going to copy all of these errors oh i had several fine then i'm going to copy all these <laughs> and we'll do the same thing for register uh so it'll be here and 
lit value. Okay, and then instead of m.lit, we're going to do the same thing where we make a register. So we'll just make a register on all these. And then for these, we do r.default value. Okay, and I want to see all these fail. <clears throat> and they do. Great. So to fix this, this should actually be really easy. Again, because we've already done this. Uh, function lit and go back. More. <laughs> and then here. So. this and we already have value here and then bit width is going to be self dot data I think and then again that's here into the specified becomes register And I'm noticing here I'm also using quotes that are different, so I might want to change that. Self.data.name. Oh, that fails now. Why? <laughs> oh, yeah. Required bits is value.required bits. Yeah, that should still work. Okay, I think I know what the issue is. I think when I move these tests over, I am still doing 32-bit registers for all these. But I think, uh, yeah, these have different bit widths. So I had seven, two, four, one. That's what these should be too. So it should be seven, two, four, one. These are arbitrary values. All right, so this is kind of cool. So now we see uh, that it almost got the right one, but you can see register. It's called A here and all these expected errors, but I think I called the register R. So we're going to do that R like that. That probably fixes it. Great. <laughs> So then we want to document this a little bit and specifies the default value of this register. And I want to probably copy a bit, bit of this. Uh, I also like to make these like this, register. here yeah
say a register is not freak or does not yeah it's not required to no a register let's say by default <laughs> a register does not have a default value and it is not required to specify one. If a default value is not specified, then this register value will not change when its modules plus it reset is asserted. That's, I think that's what I want to say. And then we need panics. And we need examples. And for examples, sometimes I just take the, like this top of one I think sets a default value. So let's just copy that. fine and then panics and I think we just start the sentence with panics if something right so panics if this register already has a default value specified or if and then I want to copy probably copy what lit says Uh, on module. Or if the specified value doesn't fit into this registers uh, bit width, I'll say. <laughs> that code is so lit. this again and now default value is documented so let's read through this again so value specifies the default value of this register uh, this register's value will reflect this I'm going to specify that a little bit more precisely default value for specifies a default value for this register this register's value will reflect this default value when I like to read it in context. I actually do want to say the default value for this register. This register's value will reflect this default value when this register's modules implicit reset is asserted. By default, a register does not have a default value and is not required to specify one. If default value is not specified, then this register's value will not change when its modules implicit reset is asserted. Okay, panics if this register already has a default value specified or if the specified value doesn't fit into this register's bit width. And the bit width is specified uh, in this module reg method, which is here. Cool. So I'll push that expel run cargo format on it. And basically nothing should have changed there. Maybe it split some of this up on different lines, but I actually don't think it did, which is just fine. 
So now we will document test uh, register default value. <clears throat> and then if we do drive next, then we've actually finished testing, implementing, and documenting uh, registers in this language, which is, which is great. I uh, still haven't done the Verilog um, implementation, but I, again, I think that's going to be relatively trivial. Okay. I think I might document this first. How did I mention like the next value? <clears throat> hey, Molith. So the next value. Register will hold its value until a positive edge of its modules of the clock. I need to do some copies of some of this stuff too. This sucks with this big stupid font. <laughs> uh, need value module. And nothing else, I guess. Until a positive edge occurs, at which point value will be updated to reflect uh, this next value. Panic section, which we won't fill out yet. And then we can do examples. And I think I might even just use the same example. It's lazy, but it's also accurate uh yeah let's copy that I'll say positive because that reflects the interface that you get generated better. And we haven't done panics yet, which is fine. So I'll just dock this to see what it looks like. <clears throat> sure, hold this value until a positive edge of its model plus clock occurs, at which point the value will be updated to reflect this next value. Um, right on the edge there. <laughs> I'm going to say it will toggle. Maybe that will look better. We'll toggle with each positive clock edge. I think that's better worded. You know, and actually, I probably don't need to do this output for a lot of these examples. Um, but it's fine. We'll just stick with that. Uh, yeah, so that's basically it. And then we can implement and document each of these cases in turn. So... We could just start at the top here. I'm sure n is the same module itself. So I already have a lot of those kind of errors in 
signal here. Um, so we just pick one. Next out of bounds, bits range low, all this stuff. Yeah, I see here. Attempted to combine signals, different modules. Actually, wait a minute, does concat do that? Yeah, that should also do this error. Repeat doesn't need to. I'm gonna add it to do for that. Nice catch, Jake. <laughs> Thanks for the sub, Molly. I really appreciate it. Uh, so yeah, this will just be down here. This will be drive next. And what did I say here for? So to do this, we need to make a module, which we can call A, for example. Or I guess we can even just reuse the code here. M1 instead of I1, we can do, really doesn't matter actually, because we can do like L is M1.lit, for example. Again, it's lit. And then we can do, for example, true with one bit. And then M2 is B, and M2 is gonna have a register. Uh, that's also one bit because we we don't want it to to have that error and then we should say r dot drive next and then we do l and here we can provide a little bit more things here so we can say attempted to drive register r next value with a signal uh, from another module. I think that's a good error. And then we can see that this fails, which I like to do. And then we can implement the, the error. And this is a real easy one to implement. self is n dot module and we need stdptr self dot data dot module will have that and then the other module great so then this will give us the wrong message so we'll do this Too easy. All right. Um, ensure ends bit width is the same as self values bit width. So this is a really easy one. In fact, we can probably also have uh, more or less the same error. Uh, so function EQ, yeah, separate module error. I'll, re I'll rename the error to be the same as this too. Okay, and then the same same idea here. Incompatible bit widths error. So this will be attempted to drive register our next value with a signal um, that has a different bit width than the register.
and then we can say the signals bit width. So let's do three and five respectively. That should match this. And then we can, here we'll make a register, which will be R and that'll be three. And then I two is some input. And then we try to drive the next one. So we say R dot uh, drive next with this input. And we can call this input I. Uh, what? Oh yeah, I changed the wrong one. This should be reg and this should be input. Multiple levels of safety here. Uh, and then I think we haven't implemented the, the actual panic here. So this is if self dot data dot bit width is not or I actually like to compare it the other way. Bit width is not equal to self dot data dot bit width. Then we do this panic. And then we have the registers name. And then we have the input value, which is and dot bit width and then self dot data dot bit width. And we put these here. Almost. Oh yeah, I think I had these the other way around. Next value with a signal that has a different bit within the register. So I put the signal first and then the register second, which I think is what I want to do here. And here I have the register has three and then this has five. So this actually should be changed. And I'm going to change it here. Uh, just to get more values out of this. Great. So that's done. We're flying guys. Um, and then ensure this register isn't already driven. And that's essentially the same as this default value one. So we're basically going to do the same case here. So for that, I'm even going to copy this. So I'm just going to call this I here. Why not? And then yes, then we have the input and then we do I here and I here. <laughs> to drive registers next value register already has uh, is already driven. I think that's what I, how I want to word it. And so then this is trivial. If n dot data dot next dot borrow dot is some then panic whoops I keep forgetting I have buttons on my mouse that can scroll so there's the register and the module name and I think that's that's it 
Nope. Why? Mr. Data has does have next. Oh, yeah, not N. It's self in this case. <clears throat> Easy. So I'll do a cargo format. Cause a sim test, cargo format. And then I'll just run the whole test suite again, and then we'll commit this, and then we're done with registers, which is nice. Or did I document these panic cases? No, I didn't. We'll need to do that too. But that's an easy one. Okay. Oops, I didn't mean to open that too. But that's fine. So we've got a register here. <clears throat> yeah, we can see drive next has a panic section, but doesn't actually talk about it. So let's go ahead and do that. Panics if, uh, and then we can again copy these here. Self and n belong to different modules uh, if the bit widths of self and n aren't equal or if this registers next value is already driven that's what I want to do. Great. Fantastic. Then I'm going to call this, commit this, and call this part of the API done. Cool. I don't know if signal or module is closer to being done, but either way we need to kind of do those. Probably module makes more sense to start out with. One of the things that I haven't done is I haven't um, linked everything that I want to. In fact, this, when I refer to value here, I should actually be linking that. So I'm going to go ahead and fix that. Uh, Whoops, wrong one. Then, yeah, I wanted to look at modules documentation. So I do want to do a little bit more with this top level stuff. Uh, in particular, I want to mention that, um, well, 
couple things actually. It can be instantiated, which I think I should link instance here. Method dot we want to just do I wonder if this works be I think if we just do uh, markdown here whoops I did not mean to commit that <laughs> that's annoying but fine that does work except it didn't go to the right place Oh yeah, that's wrong. Struct context is not right. This should be struct module. So in fact, I think I actually want to do that. kind of like to link this method. I'm not sure the best way to do that from here. Are they a sim function generated? So let's just try, let's just try a couple things here. So actually I'll link this whole thing here. be something like verilog function generate.html. This did actually work. Oh yeah, probably because we export all that to the top level stuff, which is great actually. So then this probably works too. Yeah, Verilog generate and sim generate. Great. I also want to mention a couple other things here. Um, in the same clock domain and clock these are only visible in uh, in generated code it's assumed yeah that's actually I think good enough for this right now just 
wanted to mention some of that. And resets are actually I'll just I'll just say that for now. Um commit actually gets add A and then we can get commit amend. Fill out module top module type level doc a bit more. Still not much, but helpful. Like that, then we can push that. Um, okay, and then I think, I think I've already linkified most of this stuff, but I might not have. So I want to do a quick pass at that and also just see what else is missing in here. And also see if we see any to-dos because probably are some. And some of them we might even want to fix. I'm really feeling that this is close to like a 0 0.1.0 .0 release. So... I'm not linking everything. So like these are all methods on um, on the module struct. So I'm not linking module here. Um, that's pretty much where I draw the line. Yeah, so mux is completely not implemented. We'll make a mental note of that. I think I did do, yeah, for example, context here is linkified. So that's good. Again, I'm skipping these to-dos where we check if like a name is unique. Um, but yeah, so before I document mux, I think I think this is always a two to one multiplexer. We'll also probably link to Wikipedia for this. Yeah, this is a two to one multiplexer always. I think it's still a two to one multiplexer, even though the inputs are more numbers of bits. I think that's, I think it is still that, which is kind of what I'm going to claim here. Creates a two to one multiplexer. Um, That represents when true's value when cond is high and when false's value when cond is low. putting it to do in this in this example because uh that will actually be caught as a as an error when we do when we run the tests and i like that so here if we go to function actually it should be here mux creates a two to one multiplexer that represents when true is value when cond is high and when false when cond is low and i'm intentionally ordering the arguments here to look like a ternary expression um, in C or in Rust, which I think is a good idea. I took that idea from Spinal HDL, um, which I think I mentioned a couple times has a very similar design to Kaze, uh, which is totally unintentional, but also validating, I think. Um, and I don't mind 
now knowing that they're that similar, I don't mind lifting a lot of these ideas, which I think are generally good ideas for usability, especially because I couldn't really decide on which order these arguments I liked best when specifying these muxes. So I think at least this one that follows a, a, a known pattern, I think is as good of a ordering as any, probably better just because it's a, it should be a familiar ordering to people. Um, yeah, we need to do, do this error and we need to do this one. We also need to make sure all these have the same module. So we have to do a few tests here. But I don't think it's going to be that bad. And that's kind of exciting, actually, because I think this is really the last function we have to implement in this module. I think signal is also similar where there's only one more that we have to implement, I think. And I think it's actually also mux. Um, you can tell the ones I deferred are the ones where I wasn't entirely sure about the API. I think that's generally a good decision. Prioritize the stuff you definitely know. Um, I think, yeah, I probably have to linkify all these ones in signal, but we'll get to that when we actually go over that in particular, but. But yeah, I have mux on signal, and I, and this is literally just syntactic sugar, um, or to support to support the syntactic sugar that this uh, that this macro provides here. Uh, so you could do selector dot mux, or you could do m dot mux, and then selector value and Um I think both are ways you might want to write this, so I think it's okay to have both. And that's also as self. So we need to make sure all of those match. And we need to make sure that these have the same bit width and that this bit width is always one because it's a two to one mux. So yeah, let's just do this. Uh, let's see, I had instance, so we'll put the test above there. Did I not have errors here? Oh, instantiate, which is fine. Is it reg mux instance in this case? Probably is. Yeah, and that's where those tests go. Um, again, what did I call them here? For example, equal separate module. We could say con separate module error. Because we're going to have an error for each one of these different signals. We're going to just compare them all to the module that's in self. So let C is context new. Uh, let A is C.module A. Uh, let B is C.module B, and then I wrote a lot of these errors before modules had, well, actually not before modules had names, so never mind, that's just wrong, but I wrote them before I thought to provide that information, the errors, so maybe at some point I'll take another pass and update all these, but not going to do that right now. So for B, uh, also we need a signal in A, so we could do let I is A dot, A dot input, really doesn't matter what this is two bits sure um actually i'm going to make this one and only because i want to make the only thing that's wrong with this uh the error that we're looking for here and eventually we're going to add an error for if conditional is not a one bit signal so we we don't want this to trip that error in this test 
So then B is, has this, and then we can do uh, it, this is uh, or B dot mux. And I'm going to also add uh, some other signals in here. So we could do, we could do let's do I1 here. Uh, in fact, I'll just do literals for all these. Let's do that. Yeah, that probably would have helped here. Um, but they, they do, most of them end up being slightly different in this case. I'm not sure I could have applied. Although definitely context would, would have gotten smaller. But L1 is going to be a dot lit, and then we can do uh wow really is that spam in my fucking chat <laughs> that infuriates me <laughs> i got really mad about that just now how can i do this how can i block a person i can block and report oh that's nice uh spam I think this is a bot. Not providing more information. Done. <laughs> No patience for that crap. All right, so uh, false in one. Hey, Lord Capo. And then here we need some other ones. So L two could be uh, B dot lit, and this could be I don't know thirty two U eight eight, and let L three is B dot lit thirty two U eight eight. And then here for the mux, we'll do the conditional and then the other things. <laughs> I'm good with not becoming famous. <laughs> I thought I actually had the one minute follower only chat. Oh, only followers can chat and they have to wait a minute. That seems like a good idea anyway. Yeah, project's going well, Lord Capo. Just finishing up some docs uh, and some tests and getting quite close to being able to publish this. So I'm really happy about that. Yeah, hi, Daniel Cullen. I don't know if I said that already. I might have changed that. Maybe that's a really quick thing to change. That's really cool, to Capo. I'm almost ready to start back on the actual hardware stuff <laughs> by documenting the documenting the hardware language now. But I'm quite confident this is going to be nice. Uh, I know that I shouldn't. Oh no. Uh, I went away from the from the tab, so I just lost the chat locally. That's annoying. Oh, and that asshole bot. <laughs> I'm so glad I marked my chat for adults. Uh, that asshole bot also messaged me about it. That's crap. Let's do this real quick and then we'll get back to the back to the magic. So 
only I knew how to do this. <laughs> Probably this moderation tab here. I don't have auto mod. Should probably do that. Whatever. Oh. They have block hyperlinks built in now. I think I still use Streamlabs for that. Yeah, follower only mode on. Oh, this off and then 10 minutes even. I'm still going to enable that. I don't think that hurts. Actually, wait a minute. Let me think about that again. Because I don't want to have it. Oh, they must follow me for that specified amount of time. Okay, yeah, that's definitely what I want then. Easy. All right, done. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> Thanks for the tip, though. That stuff makes me angry. Anyway, uh, so this error, yes. Um, I'm just going to run this to make sure it doesn't fail, which, of course, it shouldn't. That's not what I meant to run. Cargo test. Bang, which is good. And then I want to copy the same stuff from here. Or maybe not, actually. I actually, I'm going to copy this message, maybe. We'll see. I'm going to change my mind like five times the next couple minutes. <laughs> That's just how it's going to be. Uh, function mux. Yeah, with this here. If... Uh, equal self, and then we can do con dot module. And we can have just this makes it nice and easy. I know too that like I'm documenting this way more than it needs to be documented. <laughs> uh, So I want to add more tests for those other cases in particular. So this one. We'll do the 32 U8 here. Eight, and then we'll do L2 is going to be a lit true one. So now we can do L2, L1, L3. And yeah, so if con, we'll do when true and when false error. That's what we're testing. And then we'll basically do this thing here for this. And this will be... Uh, we can do L2 and then L3 and then 1. That'll work. These should all pass now. Great. <laughs> Done with that test.
like that. Then yeah. If when true dot bit width is not equal to when false dot bit width, then we can panic. I'm just writing this one here. Then we can write the test. Doesn't really matter which order I do these in. Um, Uh, we're gonna just even just name the fields maybe. No, I do wanna do this. We can do when true dot bit width. And when false dot did with. Okay. And then finally, uh, if cond dot, let's even do this to follow the argument order. If cond dot bit width is not equal to one, panic. Uh, Fixer conditionals must uh, can only be one bit wide. Fine. All right, so let's do a con bit with test. And then I don't remember already what the error was. So we'll just do this. Can never remember if I copy the quotes or not. And so here we want to actually do everything in the same module uh, because again we don't want that to be the issue. Uh, so eight, and so in this one L one is going to be a literal with however many value uh, bits as long as it's not one. So this will be L one, L two, L three, and then this will be A dot max. So I'm just going to run this now. That should pass. <clears throat> and it didn't. Can I fit the specified value 32 in the specified bit width 2? <laughs> That's funny, actually, because this is true. So we caught another error was, was caught here. And this is why we're doing all this. <laughs> that makes me really happy. Uh, so let's just make this 2 then. <laughs> Great. That passed. Uh, and then we'll do... Uh, true false bit with there and then function mux we'll do three and five again why not I think these also Struggle to fit. This is great. <laughs> exactly. Artemis. That's exactly what it is. Great. Uh, so this needs to be one again because we need to make sure that that's correct and then this should give us what we want. Great. So easy, you guys. And then I think the last thing I want to do here is some, some kind of example. Uh, so we could do use Kaze like that just like all the other ones I thought about 
hiding like this use in this like context thing, but I actually like that it's there in all the examples because there's there's nothing hidden. You see that this is exactly how you use this uh, how you use this this package, which I think is nice. So let's say let i1 is m dot input i1 with eight bits, for example. Uh, let i2 is m dot input i2 8 and we can say let cond is m dot input cond 1 you can call these like a and b maybe and then we can say m dot output and we can say m dot mux cond a b and then here like that. Sweet. So now if I try to run the docs here. And then I think the last thing we're missing here is the panic conditions. Great. So then we'll do that. Hey, Niner Delta. Who tests the tests? I do. <laughs> like, I know that meme, but the answer is just right there. Just making sure I have consistent error messages here too. Uh, actually, yeah, so I should say if the bit widths of these are not equal, because that's why I say otherwise. Okay, I'll just double check that and then we can do a format and uh, test and everything, cargo format. I'm starting to get so impatient with this, <laughs> but just powering through the last little bits. And we can reuse some of this documentation for for uh, signal mux as well, I think. So that'll be nice. But I do think this finishes a uh, module in terms of uh, documentation which is really cool. Like none of this was ticked for a while, but now it's just the finishing touches because I documented so many things like back and forth as I decided how they would actually work. So I'm really happy with that. Do I, I think I'm also going to go into this cause a sugar thing and I think I'm not going to do a better name for now. But I do think I need to uh, to add a to do about this formulation.
I don't think I actually need to revisit this for the initial the initial time I published the library. Uh, and I, I might be wrong about that. Um, but again, once I have everything documented, then I want to go through like the API checklist and just kind of tick all the boxes and then publish. And then it's, then it's like, we're over the hump. That's kind of the, what I'm thinking. And once there, if I want to make these changes, then I can just publish new versions because I don't, I don't have to be that strict about it. It's just the initial one I want to be. I want to take the opportunity to force myself to actually document everything, which I think is, I think is good. Even though it's, uh, I'm pretty bored of this. <laughs> um... Yeah, so just going down the list, uh, Signal would be the next one that I would want to do. Still not doing any very long gen yet. <laughs> I still haven't found a good way to test that. I did, I was considering, because there's a bunch of, um, a bunch of other Rust crates to parse Verilog. And I thought that might actually be a good idea to at least parse it and see what I get. But I think that's actually not very good because uh, it's really the behavior of the module that we get out of it that we care about, not necessarily the constructs that it generates. Um, like the generated Verilog and the generated... Like if, if you're testing it with a parser, you end up sort of testing the form, not the behavior of the generated code. Um, which is better than nothing, I, I suppose, but it actually might not be because I want to be able to change the way we output code um, kind of whenever I want or at least not have that necessarily locked down. Um, so I don't think that's a very good idea. It'd be better if there were already like Rust Verilog simulators. There are of course some packages like we, we played with before um, to, to um, generate interfaces to Verilator simulators and invoke Verilator, which might be a nice long-term solution, but it's something I don't want to have as a dependency right now. So I don't really know. The first version might even just not have those kind of tests, which I honestly would be okay with. So again, another thing that I mentioned before is that uh, I'm not being very tidy about the version of Verilog that I generate. It's going to end up being whatever uh, the Xilinx compiler accepts for the board that I'm, for the project that I'm doing now. And that's just going to be how it is for now. I think that that would be a big turnoff to some users, but I shouldn't care too much about some users right now. This is a library that I think is useful for me. So I'm going to keep focusing on that. So I think that's the right choice is to actually just not necessarily test it. Uh, test the Verilog gen. Because I also think it's going to be so straightforward. Um, and obvious when I break stuff. So I think I don't need to worry too much about that. Like this whole model has been designed around that. Uh, so, And I knew it did work in Python. So enough about that anyway signal uh i think already here i want to add links because i think if i go in the in the documentation here i'm just gonna make sure i generated the latest which i'm pretty sure i did but yeah Uh, let's go here. So these constants, min and max signal bit width, since they end up generating their own pages here, I should rather, uh, actually link back to signal there. Otherwise I wouldn't. I think module does this in several places, so I should copy it from there. Test that. And signal goes to signal, which is perfect. Yeah, and I've also, I know one of the reasons I deferred 
working on docs for signal and that's because i i don't really know how i'm going to document the top level stuff should just start like i did with modules just what is it <laughs> um the closest thing in verilog is that it's a wire um but it's already driven if you have a signal it already has a driver um so modules or the wires in verilog are a bit looser in that sense where you you make a wire and then you drive it later or you hook it up to stuff later um and ideally you hook it up to two things and one of those things drives it and the other one's like sources it and the other one sinks it sinks the value um but this is you always have this driven so yeah still not entirely sure what i want to say for this but represents a <laughs> uh not sure a one or single or multi-bit um it's, i'm not sure this is the worst part about documenting stuff i just get stuck right at the beginning Yeah, two sector. Uh, I I only recently discovered this stuff too. Pub super and pub crate. Uh, that's exactly what they do. This 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 makes it visible from the parent module, and then this makes it visible to stuff that's in this crate. And these are really useful in this exact case because like this signal, this data, this this can be used in a lot of places uh, for validation in other structures, for example, uh, and also in all the generators. They will need to be able to to inspect this. But then I really don't want this to be a, a public part of the API. So um, some of that's really nice. So I, I prefer like trying to have the the most local one possible. So in this case, uh, these are going to be used a lot by um, by other like for example, a module module will check module here to make sure that you can't combine singles from different modules. Uh, so there, you only need super. I think that makes a lot of sense. But then here, this is going to be used by the simulator generator, so it needs to be a little broader. But I try to keep that as local as possible. Yeah, I don't know when that was added, um, but I, I only learned about it like this last Christmas, so it's, it's nice. Yeah, it's a good tip, 2018 edition. I need to, I want to take a pass over like all of our demo tools and stuff and just update to latest Rust and everything. I do that periodically and it used to be a really painful experience every time because they kept changing like low level bootstrap and linkage details. But I think ever since the last time I did that or last couple times I did that, it's gotten really stable. And I think the biggest recent change that affected that was allocators. And that actually worked to our advantage anyway, because we were able to, um, to just wrap the win 32 allocator, uh, directly without any other fluff. And so we were able to delete some of the other code that we had. And in addition to that, overall, it ended up being smaller. So um, probably because that allocator was a lot more minimal in its implementation than even the system allocator would be. So so that actually was quite helpful when we did that. Yeah, I'm quite happy with Rust 2018 as well. I don't like this description, <laughs> but I might stick with it. I do module here. Probably not, which means I need to do that. I come back and just do a bunch of those too. If I want to copy this at least. Uh, 
literally just pick one. Uh, say lit, maybe. Here we can do just this. We'll do Hey Finrog. <laughs> I bet you're laughing so much at yourself right now. Uh Let's do concat as a good example, I think. Can I just do this? Probably. Maybe that was uh, actually pretty long for him for this, but I don't really care. I'm gonna try this though. Oh, I'm sure she did, Finrog. <laughs> that sounds terrible, but they're at a museum together, which is nice. Uh, Finrog is my wife's sister's boyfriend. Legally less in the family than I am, I'd like to add. Get wrecked. It must be boring if <laughs> this is what he's doing. <laughs> Actually, I'll just say that they're local to the modules. Great. <laughs> I want to find something I can link to about Verilog wires, but I might just just say that.
Yeah, let's stick with that actually. Uh, but we need to do examples for this. And literally anything's an example for this in this API. <laughs> so I'm not entirely sure what I want to do for this, but. Bye. <laughs> uh, so we could say let this is m dot lit, and we could say I don't know f f eight 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 bit signal equals m dot input. What else can we do? I want to do I want to do an example where we combine stuff. Let's just do, for example, A B C. We can do C is B dot bits two to one, and I think this ends up being a two bit signal. Or we can do let's actually do seven to one to make an eight bit signal. And we can just let D is A plus C, for example. And I, I want to do something like M dot output. Uh, my output D. I think that's nice. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. And then already here we can do a cargo test just to make sure that builds, but it should. If not, we'll get a nice error about it. And it did, which is great. So not gonna worry about that then. I think if I do a cargo format, nothing changes. That's my guess. And I'll commit this too. Okay. Um. And then I think the rest is to basically linkify stuff and then document that mux function. Uh, and then we're done with signal too. And then there's some more docs and stuff left, uh, but we're getting a lot closer. This is just to document these functions, but I do want to write a bit about what comes out of them. So I'll actually probably wait to document Verilog until I actually do the Verilog gen. Remage FRSC is 8-bit. Yeah, did I say that? Yeah, it is. Yeah, in this case. Because the, these are inclusive bit ranges. And the reason I do inclusive ones is because it matches this... Uh... Ooh, wait a minute. Ooh. Did I do this wrong? I mean, I, this must be 8-bits because this should have caught it. But I'm actually wondering about that. Let me check this. Because I think I think this should have been down to zero. That's what I actually wanted to express. That seems a bit wrong to me now, actually. Oh, it's it hasn't run the doc test yet. If I just run cargo test, then it should run this. Or, yeah, because this was the errors. So now it's running the test. 
Yeah, so it didn't actually run it. That's a good catch. Although this should catch it too now. So if I, that didn't catch it because I fixed it. So if I do this, it should catch it. I want to see it catch it. <laughs> there it is. Nice. Singles had different bit widths, eight and seven respectively. Perfect. Good. <laughs> I'm just going to amend the commit and force push. Nice. Yeah, I need to set up CI for this too. That's true. I just hate doing that. <laughs> but that would definitely be helpful. Yeah, our GitHub action is nice. I've noticed in uh, mini FB, I think I follow that crate, so I've been noticing a lot of changes there, and that seems to use actions. Because <clears throat> I used to use Travis for all that kind of stuff, but uh, if if I can just do that in GitHub directly, then I don't see see any reason not to. Yeah, cool. I'll definitely look into that then. I can just steal that configuration. That's great. Yeah, so now I'm just going through and just trying to see if I missed any links, which I don't think I have, so this is good. Yeah, here module should be linked. So we'll go ahead and fix that. Probably several of these that need to be fixed. Nice, that's great. So we're, we're going to need to fix this up in a lot of places. In fact, yeah, let's, let's do it by hand. There's not that many of these. I also duplicate a lot of this test code, which I should refactor. I think that's okay. Oh, that's a good idea. To run cargo format there too. That'd be nice. Get there. Still just gonna check for some more some more of these module links. And concat here should also link. I'm going to test that one. That was add, I think. Not too worried about most of these links. But yeah, add. Add one. It could be concatenated. And that should take us there. Beautiful. Just beautiful. 
So I think we will do these other ones. Enough or not, because that doesn't do any of those kind of air checks. Great, then we're done with that part. And then I skipped over Mux, which we need to, to do. I think I'll do that before I go today. Which I will do in not too much time, I think. I also want to, on that ad, um, be clear in this example. For carry. I think I want to make that explicit because that's nice. Nice. Good to have that example. So for this mux function, I'm going to basically just link the other one, I think. Uh, and it should just inherit all the failure conditions of that other one. So I think this doesn't really matter. And I'm going to keep this to do here. Um, but yeah, there's the module mux. Oops. Uh, here. That represents when true, when self is high and when false when self is low Close context. I wanted that one open. That's here. Like this, and I think we can do dot slash struct dot module dot html like this, and then method dot mux. I think that's what we want to do for this. So I'll start with that, and then I also want to. Uh, yeah. Great. So we still want to have panics. And I could just link to the other one, but I think I actually do want to repeat it here. Um, panics if when true or when false belong to different module itself if cell spit width is not one or if the bit widths of when true are not, are not equal that's correct and then we'll do the same we'll just copy the example from the other one and then rewrite it a little bit and that'll basically be done i think and so then here 
instead of m.mux, we will do cond.mux. Like that. Sweet. So then I think that's it for module, actually, which is awesome. So now all these are filled in. This feels really good. Uh, I'm going to also, though, just run a cargo format again, do all this manual stuff. And run the whole test suite. You know, I might also copy the tests for Mux. I think that'd be a good idea. Feels like the right thing to do. Like so, I think it's before all these operators. Like any LT, LT, I think all those are before that. So mux. I like to keep all these in the same order. Not necessary, but feels clean. So after GE, before add, that's where it should be. And so in all of these mux ones, we just want to rewrite it. On that mux, and it should be exactly the same syntax. Although, there is a case where this is going to be different. Um, yeah, I think this is fine. So this can be one bit wide, attempts to combine singles for different modules. That would be this one, I think. And I think we'll get the same for all of these cases. And I think maybe that's all we want. So if I run the test suite again, this should work. I think it already ran. Nice. S64 and now there's 69 tests, so again, nice. I also like having separate tests because these are technically separate entry points, even if they're implemented exactly the same and we're upfront about implementing them the same. I think that's, that's good. Then we also have individual test cases that test all the panic conditions of this other module, which is, I think is really good. Also, I'm one of the things that I've decided I'm not going to do anymore is like mention on GitHub. I mean, right now I'm doing that because this is like work in progress. But as soon as I do, I should actually add a note to document this. Yes, yeah, so even this, it doesn't say. Um, actually, I want to say HDL. Um, I don't want to say like work in progress or anything in any of these docs. Like it is that, but I don't want to like be all timid about what this is. <laughs> if, if you know what I mean, I decided to be less apologetic about that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, we can, we can tick signal. I'm pretty happy with that. So yeah, top level docs. I'm still going to defer. Um, sugar may, might be the next thing I do. Yeah, we'll see. Anyway, I think so far this is looking really good. Everything has examples, which is nice. Everything's all linked. Um, everything has tests, everything has panics. I'm really pleased with this. I'm pleased with this API in, in general. Like this is something where I don't mind 
mean, obviously I'm impatient with it and stuff, but like, uh, it really isn't too bad, um, to like go through and document everything and, and build this API when I have such a clear idea of what the design is in my head. So this has been a really good experience, I think. Um, I also just noticed something for consistency's sake. Uh, when I've linked these kind of methods in other modules, I've actually split this up into a module and mux link, which I think I want to do. Or maybe not. Yeah, I'm going to do it for consistency, but I wonder actually which one's the better pattern. Probably doesn't really matter too much. Oh, and I also didn't link module here. So let's take the opportunity to fix that too. Why not? Uh, there. Yeah, so now this module is linked and this one's linked. And this one should link to Mux. Great. So now it's clear that sugar is missing stuff and that I don't have anything here other than this this one line, which is not, not very good. I mean, this is probably okay for this module actually, uh, but this function should uh, should definitely have docs. But again, I've been deferring that because I, I want to explain what you get out of that beyond just that you get a simulator. Um, some details about how to use that simulator and some recommendations for um, for what to do with it. But I think for today, I think we've done more than enough. So I'm very much looking forward to probably this weekend. Uh getting Verilog gen in and kind of finishing this up and publishing it and then just going full force on Xenowing. Um, and I still like, I'm, I'm going to be pretty lax about changing this API, I think. Um, and whenever we need new stuff for Xenowing, then it will go in, I think. So pretty happy with that. Anyway, thanks guys for hanging out and I'll see you next time.